up guys? Today we're going to talk about how to paint the plastic parts that you have, uh, whether they're for your guitar, which I assume most of the people from my channel are looking for, or for something else. So this includes, obviously, cavity covers like what I'm going to be painting today, and pick guards and other things of that nature. So painting plastic presents a particular challenge because paint has a tendency not to stick to it, just like it doesn't stick to glossy surfaces very well. That's why, uh, well, that might not be the reason, but uh, a lot of paint cups are made of plastic, paint mixing cups are made of plastic, stuff like that. If you've ever mixed up clear coat in a mixing cup and left it in there, you'll notice that the next day you can just peel it out, whereas you can't peel the clear coat off of whatever you painted. So there's something in plastic that makes it difficult for paint to stick to, and for that reason, we need to take a couple of extra steps when we're painting this stuff. So this first step is nothing new. Uh, if you've watched my videos, you know that you need to scuff stuff before you paint it. So I'm just going to be using some gray scotch Bright and making sure that I've taken all of the gloss off of this piece of plastic so that the paint can bond to it mechanically. There's got to be something for the paint to grip onto. Apparently I'm using my shirt to clean things now. So the piece of plastic isn't glossy like it was before. I guess I didn't show it to you before. But it's got a nice matte scuffed up surface. So that's where we need to be to begin with. Next up, it's always best to clean your plastic. I've already done that um, very recently with wax and grease remover. Get my fingerprints off of there and everything uh, and make sure that you don't have a bunch of dust on there. So I'm just gonna quickly wipe mine down with a tack cloth because like I said, I used wax and grease remover on it and I haven't really touched the face of it since then. And then I'm gonna spray it with a very light coat of adhesion promoter. So what I have here is adhesion promoter, what, what the hell? There's a brand name on here somewhere, I swear to God. Dominion Sure Seal? I don't know, whatever. Adhesion promoter or you can use plastic primer. Now, a lot of people use Krylon Fusion and they say, oh, it says it's good for plastic and well, I hate that crap. So use that if you want, but uh, I haven't really had good results with it, and I've had a lot of people asking me why they haven't had good results with it, and uh, I'm in no position to say that it's a subpar product, but I don't like it. So, if you want to use Drylon Fusion, don't ask me why it's not working, because if I knew that, I would be able to use it myself. So a light coat of adhesion promoter, or if you're using plastic primer, and a normal coat of plastic primer. So I'm going to give that a couple minutes to dry now and then I'm going to start actually painting it. Um, I know a lot of you are likely going to be painting with spray cans and that's what I'm going to do on this particular little piece because that's what the job calls for. But with the adhesion promoter, uh, you don't have to let it dry and, and scuff it and any of that stuff. You just go ahead and spray over it. Whether you're using spray cans or something else, I often airbrush plastic pieces using this method or go in with my water-based paints and my paint gun. It really doesn't matter. The adhesion promoter is helpful regardless. Sometimes I even use that in conjunction with the primer. So it doesn't take long for a very light coat of adhesion promoter to dry. I sprayed that about a minute and a half ago. Came over and yapped at you guys for a couple minutes. Not even. And now I'm ready to spray my paint. What I'm going to be using for this particular piece is some pearlescent black from the Rust-Oleum Metallic series. This one's called uh, Black Knight. It's not Batman, something else. Shit, Batman was the Dark Knight, not the Black Knight. Anyway, if you're using this particular product, keep in mind that it's not completely opaque, uh, even after several coats. Well, maybe eventually. I'm sure it would be opaque eventually, but after a few coats, it's not. So I'm using the black. If I were painting something white and I wanted it to turn this color, I would put black underneath it first, a matte black from the same company. Uh, however, the piece is already black, so that would be a bloody waste. I'm just going to use this. It can be challenging to get an even coat of paint, particularly with a spray can because it's got a round spray pattern typically. Uh, so if you have concerns about that, if you're finding that it's difficult for you, particularly on larger things like pick guards, 
I do have a video about how to get an even coat of paint with spray cans. I think that's probably pretty relevant. So feel free to check that out. Um, if you don't have a problem with it, then spray. Now typically for full coverage I would do two coats uh, with an enamel spray can like that. Because the base is black already and that is essentially just to add the pearlescence to it, I'm only doing one light coat, um, well relatively light. But don't take that to mean that that's how it should be done. With most paints you're going to want to do two moderately heavy coats. So after that paint's had time to dry or flash off, depending on what you're using, uh, maybe I should explain that a little better, you're going to want to let your water-based paints dry completely. But your solvent-based paints, if you let them dry completely, you have to scuff them again before you clear coat them. So I'm going to give it 15 minutes to dry enough for another coat, but not so much that all the solvents are gone and the next coat won't melt into it. Anyway, once that's had time to flash off, then it's time to put your clear coat on. It's always best to use a clear coat to protect, protect your paint job, in my opinion. Some paints don't necessarily need it. If you're using a gloss enamel, technically you don't need a clear coat on that. Um, or if you're using a gloss lacquer, technically you don't need a clear coat on that either, although most people do choose to put a clear coat on there to protect it. By the way, be careful. If you're gonna try and use like a nitrocellulose lacquer on plastic, you might melt it, so. Maybe just don't do that. Anyway, to make a long story endless, I'm going to go ahead and clear coat this thing. And what I recommend you do for clear coat, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to do a video at some point about how many coats you need for stuff. People are telling me they're doing five, six light coats of clear, and that's the instructions on the can, and I'm thinking, what the hell? You don't need five coats of clear. Uh, I'm going to do three, and the first one's going to be very light, just, it's called a tack coat, it's just to allow this stuff to stick a little better. And then the second two, second two, the second and third will be moderate enough to have a fairly wet coat so that the paint glosses out properly. If your clear coat doesn't look glossy, consider that maybe you're putting it on too light. If it starts to run uh, or it's not drying properly, then chances are you're putting it on too heavy. It's easier to err on the side of lighter you can always polish out that roughness or you can do a heavier coat over top. If you put it on too heavy, you're going to be probably in a little bit of trouble, but uh, there is a balance to be struck there. Uh, use a mask. I'm in a huge room and uh, I'm about to be holding my breath. But if you're spraying enamel spray cans or any solvent based paint or any paint, wear a mask. All right, so that covers the painting process. At this point, the only thing left to do would be to polish it. Let me just show it to you first, eh? And that was a, a hey, not an A. I know I'm Canadian, but yeah. Uh, so there we go, nice and glossy, but there's some orange peel. Pretty typical. So what remains is to polish it. You sand it flat and then you polish it out. I have several videos on that. I've got how to polish your clear coat, uh, polish comparison where I polish something with several different kinds of polish so you can see which ones work better, I guess. Uh, then at the end of my how to paint your snowboard video series and the end of my how to paint your guitar video series, those both have polishing tutorials, so I'm not gonna do another one uh, at this point. <laughs> but follow those steps and you should end up with a nice glass-like finish uh, on your plastic components and there's no reason why that shouldn't stick just as well as paint does to anything else. So to recap for those of you who skipped most of the video and just click to the end to see what happened uh, you're gonna want to scuff your piece make sure it's nice and and, uh, and roughed up for the paint to adhere to it. Use adhesion promoter preferably you can also use plastic primer or a combination of the two beginning with adhesion promoter it's kinda up to you and then you're going to paint it, uh, hopefully you know how to do that, <laughs> and then you're going to clear coat. 
And finally, make sure you polish out your clear coat for the best finish. So I hope that was helpful and that uh, not everything in the video was blatantly obvious to you. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. If you've got some projects you're working on with this kind of stuff and you want to send me some pictures or something, feel free to do so. You can send me pictures on Facebook or Twitter. I'll put the, uh, the links in the description of the video. Or if you want to add a video in the, uh, the video responses to this or show one to me, that's fine too. So if you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.